Okay, let me just say a few words while this is uh, going on. Um, photovoltaics uh, is already cost effective in all situations in which the cost of the energy is irrelevant compared to the value of the energy. Things like parking meters and various kinds of uh, things like that. But in order to compete with the big boys when it comes to generating large-scale power with coal and uh, gas and, uh, and oil, um, they're quite far from being cost-effective. Um, and what I'd like to do is point out, uh, first of all, why I think that is, and uh, what, two ways to overcome. One way is technology, and the other is the way um, uh, solar energy is funded. So here's a large solar field. Here's a large solar field in the United States, and if you simply think of this, make it very much larger in order to provide for some of Israel's needs. What do I mean by some of Israel's needs? I don't want to blind you with too many numbers. Today, uh, the Israel Electric Corporation is generating something like 60 billion kilowatt hours per year, and it's been rising linearly for the last 20 years. So 10 years from now, we're going to be something like 80 billion. And um, the government claims that 10 years from now, 10% of our electricity will come from renewables. So 10% of 80 billion is 8 billion, and that means that we have to install, on average, 0 0.8 billion uh, kilowatt hours of renewables every year, starting here for the next 10 years. Now, what does that mean? That means something, if you're talking about PV, it means something like 400 megawatts every year. Now, nobody in the whole world has ever built a 400 megawatt PV power plant. Why? Because no bank will come up with that kind of funding. And the reason that no bank will come up with it is that PV at the moment is fundamentally a bad investment. It's a lose situation. And uh, this is man this manifests itself in Israel and in various European countries that a feed-in tariff that require the power company to pay for PV electricity three to five times the rate at which they sell the electricity to the public. So who loses? The public loses because we have to cover this in our taxes. In other countries, there are things like tax shelters and tax credits which enable people to buy PV systems more cheaply and then they can run their electricity meter forwards or backwards um, but still, there is a, a loss involved because it's a bad investment. Um, so in some sense, by continuing this, uh, this hidden way in which the public is, um, it's prolonging a bad investment. It, it's not encouraging things to get any better. But the simple way to do things, if the public really wants to go green, the purpose of taxation is to enable the public in a transparent to pay for goods, if we were to simply add a 20% consumption tax to our electricity, that would generate, just the tax would generate every year enough money to build a 400 megawatt PV plant. You see? It didn't, doesn't cost anything at conventional PV prices in Israel. So the people who are importing Chinese panels, because all the world today is using Chinese panels, will have the wettest of wet dreams because they will be uh, building, instead of a few megawatts, building hundreds of megawatts every year. And it would, could all be done with public money, and the public could even be, um, I don't want to go into that now, um, uh, brought to really love what they're doing. But what I do want to do is, PV is one way of doing things, but there are much better ways of doing it. Um, Israeli technology, developed here, used widely in the United States, Spain, and uh, North Africa. Why isn't it used in Israel? In terms of land area, it would occupy half as much as PV. Question to ask ourselves. Uh, the future. The big problem with PV is the material itself is expensive. 
So rather than try and make the material cheaper, make the sun stronger. Use mirrors or magnifying glasses. The mirrors on the right top were developed uh, by my group at Ben Gurion University, uh, Zenith Company, uh, with, their, uh, uh, with their factory in Kiryat Gat. Um, the one on the uh, on your right, top top right, also uses mirrors, mini mirrors, developed by my colleagues also at Ben Gurion University, but commercialized by American company Sol Focus. And in the center, another Israeli giant system, 50 kilowatts uh, that you can see in Arad, another Israeli company, MST. Can, this can do things extremely cost effectively, even in terms of uh, investment, if I come back to investment, one of the beauties about this is that it's a very long-term investment, but it's sure because it, 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 uh, the sun is the sun. Nobody's going to play around with the, the price of sunshine. And it's an investment that will take roughly 20 years to pay off, which is just perfect for pension funds. And then after 20 years, you have a situation in several tens of percent of a country's electricity needs come from solar energy and from then on it's absolutely free, except for the operation and maintenance costs which we estimate would be about half a cent per kilowatt hour. That's a whole order of magnitude cheaper than any electricity cost today. With electricity at half a cent a kilowatt hour you can make hydrogen by simple electrolysis of seawater at the equivalent of something like 30 euro cents per gallon. I used to talk in American sense, but it becomes a uh, little complicated because of fluctuating rates. But uh, to be able to produce um, a, a automotive fuel from seawater at the, at the fixed price of uh, uh, 30 cents a gallon is uh, a dream which could come true with this kind of technology. So, thank you.